Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers update tonight, the 12th of March 2013. Tonight's update will look specifically at the future potential tropical cyclone developing in the far northern Coral Sea over the next three to five days. But before we do that, we're going to have a quick look at what Sandra is doing over the past 24 hours and what she's expected to do over the next 48 to 72 hours. So shown here is the current forecast JTWC track where the red is is where the last track uh, location of Tropical Cyclone Sandra was. It's a category 2 hurricane, category 3 tropical cyclone at that time. Expected to move in a southerly direction now, uh, well away from New Caledonia, which is fantastic news. Um, uh, there are parts of the northwestern tip that are experiencing or have experienced wind gusts up to 100 kilometres an hour and some heavy rain. But look, that's about as bad as it's ever going to get with this system as it continues to push well west of the island. Numea is pretty well in the clear now, uh, which is fantastic news for the populated regions of the island. Look, there's still going to be some heavy rain, uh, potentially associated with this system especially as you get some of those uh, some of those more moist northeast winds hitting the ranges here uh, they are going to dump a fair bit of rain in that but look overall uh, the the tropical cyclone will pass well to the west and shouldn't have too much of an effect on the on the actual island itself from the main circulation. Uh, we do have we do see in the in the longer term the system continuing to track in a in a more southerly direction um, rather than towards the west. So look, very minimal chance of anything happening over southeastern Queensland. You can see here on the edge of your screen, southeast Queensland. Look, no model guidance is suggesting a a push back towards southeast Queensland. You can see that overall the system not looking healthy at all. Look, it, it is weakening. It's getting sheared away. Uh, and look, the system, I'd be surprised if it lasted more more than another two days. Uh, with the chance being even that it may weaken out tomorrow sometime. But overall, it does still have fairly good rotational structure here. Uh, we do see uh, some outflow, uh, very stunted towards the north, good outflow to the south. So there is still, uh, there is an upper level trough in here. And so that's creating the outflow. The outflow is the top of the storms being able to escape uh, the system centre, which allows new storms to build around the centre. So we still have some very good convection near the centre. But overall, the system is looking very, very weak. It might get a bit of a spurt on tonight again. Uh, normally, tropical cyclones do tend to strengthen just a little bit at night time, particularly uh, weaker systems that are struggling to create their own storms. Uh, do get a bit of a do get a little bit of a kickstart or a boost um, overnight in the overnight hours into the early morning. Uh, sort of like a bit of an energy drink, if, if you like, uh, where they get they just get this. Big boost of uh, boost of energy uh, in the early hours of the morning, late hours overnight. But that will likely be the last chance this system has of getting any sort of little boost. So why is it dying? Well, it's heading into some fairly strong wind shear. You can see here the system centre uh, located between 20 and 30 knot line here, 20 to 30 knots of wind shear. Most of the storms are being sheared away to the south of the system. Um, it's heading into a southerly direction, and if we overplot the direction of movement in the future to it, and we see once we look at all the model guidance that the system is going to push and track in into more and more unfavorable conditions. Look at this wind shear down here, 70 knots, and be aware that or this this entire high levels of wind shear is pushing towards the east because there is an upper level trough in here and it is slowly pushing towards the east. Uh, but as I say, very slowly, uh, but look, very much increasing wind shear. This system is, it's hours and days, well definitely days, but it's hours could even be numbered if this shear increases a little bit more than expected. No chance, as I said, of the southeast Queensland being affected from this system and very little chance now other than some, you know, showers and storms that, that are trying to get pulled into towards the system. Uh, very little chance of anything else really affecting New Caledonia either. So great news all up. All right, let's move on. All right, let's track our new low. Our new low is now going towards the northeastern parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria, and it is heading towards Bamaga, uh, which is just here on the tip of the Cape. It is heading in this direction, so somewhere between Bamaga and the edge of Pe 
Papua New Guinea, which is just here, um, is where the system's expected to track somewhere through the Torres Strait. We are we have seen the Bureau of Meteorology now issuing a severe weather warning for this region for winds up to 100 kilometres an hour, possibly affecting uh, affecting the region as the low tracks towards the east and gets closer. Uh, there is still a little bit of uh, variation as to where to actually place this low. It's not the most well defined circulation just yet but it is starting to become better defined. You can see here um, overall the low could be placed anywhere along this area uh, along this area that my cursor is going through now uh, but uh, look it, it is still a fairly weak circulation as it gets stronger we will see it tighten up we will see it push into the northern coral sea and that's when we might see a little bit of uh, cyclonic action from it Looking at the latest satellite imagery that we've got from the area, we can see just some general uh, general uh, rotation there, but there's nothing nothing set in concrete that can show us a, a definite low-level circulation centre, if you like. But look at these really, really strong thunderstorms well to its northwest. Some really strong storms affecting Cape York Peninsula. No doubt inside those storms there's going to be some fairly strong squalls involved in them as well. The other thing to note is some very dry air coming into the southern parts of the Gulf and central parts of the Gulf. So this system must remain, if it's got any chance of development, this system must remain up here in the north. And as it continues eastwards, it needs to remain in the northern Coral Sea for it to become uh, effective in terms of its further development. Once it pushes uh, too far to the south, say towards Cairns, Townsville, uh, or just off the coast of that region, a lot of dry air starts to filter in. We'll talk a bit more about that shortly. Okay, now let's have a look at where some of the global computer models are tracking this system. So at the moment, or, or developing by uh, this afternoon, and, and that so we've seen it happen quite in the same area that this is showing. This is the Canadian model, uh, and the Canadian is not really that accurate, but for this particular system it has initialized it very well. And you can see the system going east or east northeast, crossing the crossing the tip of the Cape or just into Torres Strait pushing to the east, developing further, possibly into a Category 1 system, but really not developing any more than that, pushes in a very similar uh, very similar area to uh, tropical cyclone Sandra and continues out here to the southeast into some cooler waters eventually. Uh, but it, look, it adopts an easterly pattern and a southerly pattern. And most of the model guidance is suggesting something similar except for the European. So we'll have a look at some of the others. We'll have a look at GFS and the UK Met. Okay, so the GFS is suggesting that the system remains, or sorry, is currently in the central northern gulf and will push in an easterly direction, cross the tip of the cape, maybe form into a category one system as it pushes towards the east or east-southeast and eventually does a complete UE and starts heading back towards the west. Now, uh, we all know how much the GFS was tipping this with the uh, Sa Sandra system and that's why we had the um, doomsday predictions of southeast Queensland getting pummeled. As I say, the GFS, not the most accurate model when it comes to cyclone, cyclone forecasting, but it can't be ignored completely either. So, And it is suggesting an easterly push followed by a sharp turn back towards the west. Now, what's important to note, though, is that as it does that sharp turn, you can see the colours changing. It goes from light blue to dark blue to purple. That, show, that shows us that the system weakens from a, a, a weak, weak cyclone into a low, into almost nothing by the end of the forecast period. So that's another key thing to understand, that the GFS and the European model are very similar in their thinking in terms of this low or cyclone um, remains weak weakens further and then if it does push back towards the Queensland coast it will weaken even further into an almost non non event and now we start getting into the more accurate models the UK met very similar type scenario where the system pushes east over the top of around about Bamaga or into the Torres Strait develops into a category 1 cyclone continues to push towards the southeast starts to weaken as it as it slows down and drifts towards the south and then sharply curves back towards the west towards the Queensland coast 
but once again uh, we see the color codes changing from light blue to darker blue to dark blue to purple which suggests the system weakens and weakens and weakens throughout its entire life cycle look by the looks of these models this system will have probably a two to three day window the next three days are critical for it to form into a tropical cyclone if it can't do so after about day three which is say the end of the week or Saturday uh, by Sunday things start to become a lot less favorable for this tropical low uh, and then it should weaken out as I say the ones that do push it back towards the coast and look most of the models are pushing it back towards the coast but as it as they do so it makes it a non-event so it washes it out into a trough system uh, or a very very weak tropical low no longer a tropical cyclone no longer any wind threat there may be some rain though with it and that, I think that's what North Queensland and, and uh, far North Queensland are really hoping is that it does do that sharp recurve and provide at least a little bit of rain relief um, because this area has seen some fairly high rainfall deficiencies over the last few months Okay, so we're going to have a look at the European model now, and we're going to have a look at the Euro model with a, a view at looking at the wind speeds as well as this system tracks across the Cape. Now, tonight the system should be located, according to the Euro, fairly well close to the coast here uh, between Bamaga and Weeper and there's the centre but once again it looks elongated there is gale force or there are gale force winds to its north and let's have a look at how it tracks over the next few days so this is now Wednesday morning that's coming up on your screen you can see a general eastward track by Wednesday morning it actually pushes the system right over the top of the eastern Cape York Peninsula it starts to get gales on its north also starting to see the potential for gales towards its south um, or at least strong wind warning winds towards its south uh, not quite tightly wrapping around the system though so not a cyclone yet Wednesday night we see that system uh, continuing to intensify we now definitely have gales to its western quadrant gales to its north but once again those gales are not tightly wrapping around the system so it'll be touch and go as to whether the bureau decide to, to jump the gun or not jump the gun so much but uh, whether the bureau decide to actually give it a name or whether the bureau will continue to keep this a monsoonal low um, so very very tight to call at the moment as we go towards Thursday morning we do start to see the potential for it to really be a cyclone by now because we're starting to get 28 to 35 knots all the way around the system um, with certain pockets of 35 plus knots um, around the, particularly to the west of the system and the north of the system as we head towards Thursday night we see that the system maintains a fairly strong eastward or east south eastward trajectory here it's east northeast of Cairns, Cairns is right there where my cursor is the system is now east northeast of Cairns and continuing to push in an east southeast direction as we head towards Friday morning we see look almost definitely this system is a tropical cyclone the wind speeds at the surface now really suggest you're talking 40 plus knots sustained wind speeds at the surface now so really does suggest that this is now a cyclone um, by Friday morning and if we head towards Friday night we see that the system uh, once again starts to wrap even tighter around so maybe slightly intensifying as we head towards Friday night continuing to push in a southeast direction until Saturday morning where Saturday morning it starts to ease off on its southeastward movement but it also starts to weaken so let's have a look at what happens Saturday morning to make it weaken and the first thing we look for is wind shear wind shear is the change of wind speeds or direction with height now you can see as the system tracks southwards we have a lot of wind shear anywhere sort of from about Ingham southwards so if the system is east of Ingham at that point in time or south of that it's starting to encounter 20 plus knots of wind shear now we saw in Sandra right now it's between 20 and 30 knots of wind shear and we see how bad and ugly the system looks so you can imagine that if the system starts to track into this green yellow which is 30 30 plus knots of wind shear it really has absolutely no chance of survival now not only is wind shear an issue as the system track 
south. So going back to here, just to rem remind you where the system is, um, if we have a look, that's our wind. Uh, that's our wind speeds on the surface. That's our wind shear. But not only that, let's have a look at how much moisture is in the atmosphere. Now cyclones require a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. Now you can see that the system, where it is right there, still has enough moisture to sustain it. But look at this really dry air on the Queensland coast around Townsville, Bowen, Mackay, really bone dry air and it's trying to do its best to wrap itself around the system and you can see here that you can see here um, the, the winds or the, the dry air really trying to wrap into the tight circulation of the system and so once that dry air in it, coupled with wind shear starts to affect the system you're going to see it dramatically weaken um, as that happens so once again Saturday morning let's have a look what happens by Saturday night Saturday night the system tracks in a southwest or south southwest direction but once again you can see the wind speeds around it weakening it's only a borderline tropical cyclone at this point in time wind speeds on the coast really haven't adapted it's only 15 to 20 knots on the coastline um, maybe a little bit stronger further to the south towards rocky but really overall 15 to 20 knots is is the go on sunday morning we see that the system once again hasn't really weakened overly uh, overly aggressively but once again if we track through wind shear uh, by sunday Sunday morning we see that the system is just in heaps of wind shear look the, the wind shear seems to die down and push a little bit further to the south but then the other issue we have still is this really dry air look at this dry air it's really wrapping itself right into the core now of the system and you can see that um, you can see this really just it just unabating this dry air just keeps wrapping and wrapping and wrapping around the system and as soon as the system loses a moisture inflow or moisture advection into it uh, it really it really can't survive uh, if we continue then to track the system through to through to the end of the forecast for this particular model um, we go through to Sunday night and we see that the system really starts to weaken now 28 to 35 knots it does approach the Queensland coast let's not mistake that and look overall most of the model guidance does suggest to track back towards the west at the moment under the influence of ridging we are starting to get some strong winds on the coast by next Monday morning we're starting to get 25 to 35 knots of winds um, on on the coastline anywhere sort of around the Mackay to its Sundays uh, Mackay with Sundays region as the system tracks towards the uh, west but look it's still very much up in the air depending on how much that dry air wraps around if that dry air wraps around too fast the system will just die um, especially if we get that wind shear look at this dry air right there as it's approaching the coast way too much dry air for it if it can maintain a little bit of this moisture feed into it it may even uh, hold its intensity as a category one system all the way to landfall but at this stage very very doubtful and most of the model guidance does suggest a sharp weakening as the system tries to push back to the west look I have mentioned Mackay I have mentioned Townsville I have mentioned Cairns don't take that for gospel it could still do anything if it stays a strong system it is likely to continue to push south into the coral sea and not push back towards the coast uh, because of the steering mechanisms if it's a weak system like you see here it is very likely to push back towards the west all right folks thanks for watching tonight before i leave Rob from Western Pacific Weather, who is one of our partner sites here, uh, has a new logo competition. And so if you think you're creative enough to, to give a give a new logo for, for Rob's Western Pacific Weather channel, um, please go to his website and he's offering some prizes. Uh, deadline is March the 20th and the reward is a 3,000 point card for iTunes and a choice of either a coffee mug, hat or iPhone case with your logo stamped on top of it. Plus you obviously get to see your logo, your creative logo on Rob. Western Pacific Weather site. Western Pacific Weather is your go-to place when there's typhoons around during our winter uh, and uh, their summer. So fantastic if you've got friends, relatives in Southeast Asia and want to keep track of what's happening up there. Western Pacific Weather is your go-to source. Thanks to Rob for his support and thanks to you guys for watching this video. Talk to you again tomorrow.